The tension in the room was palpable as the leaders of the major human factions gathered around the large conference table. Representatives from the United Nations, the Eurasian Union, the Pan-African Alliance, the Oceanic Coalition, and the North American Dominion had all answered the urgent summons, their faces creased with worry. General Alexander Petrov, the hardened commander of the Eurasian Union's military forces, cleared his throat and addressed the assembly. Gentlemen, I'm sure you're all aware of the dire situation we find ourselves in. The alien Imperium has been systematically destroying our colonial outposts, glassing entire worlds and slaughtering our people. A murmur of discontent rippled through the group, and General Petrov held up a hand to silence them. We can no longer afford to act independently. The Imperium's technological and military superiority is overwhelming. If we are to have any chance of survival, we must set aside our differences and work together. The representatives exchanged uneasy glances, the weight of the decision heavy on their shoulders. Decades of political and ideological rivalries had driven them apart, but now the very existence of humanity hung by a thread. Finally, President Akiko Tanaka of the Oceanic Coalition spoke up. General Petrov is right. We must put aside our differences and present a united front against this common enemy. The Imperium must be stopped, no matter the cost. One by one, the other faction leaders nodded in agreement, their faces resolute. They knew that this was humanity's last stand, and they were willing to risk everything to ensure its survival. The council chambers were alive with a flurry of activity as the faction leaders and their military advisors set to work, pooling their resources and knowledge to formulate a comprehensive strategy against the Imperium. General Petrov, now the de facto commander of the United Human Forces, poured over the latest intelligence reports, his brow furrowed in concentration. The Imperium's fleet movements suggest they're targeting our primary manufacturing and resource hubs. If we lose those, we'll be crippled beyond recovery. Admiral Liam O. Eilly, the grizzled commander of the Oceanic Coalition's naval forces, leaned forward in his chair. Then we need to focus our defenses on those key locations. We'll need to coordinate our fleets and ground forces to create a layered defense that the Imperium can't penetrate. The representatives from the North American Dominion and the Pan-African Alliance chimed in with their own strategic insights, and soon a comprehensive plan began to take shape. They would fortify their most vital systems, concentrating their military might to create an impenetrable bulwark against the Imperium's onslaught. As the discussions continued deep into the night, a sense of cautious optimism began to take hold. For the first time in decades, the human factions were working in harmony, their differences set aside in the face of a common threat. The Imperium's fleet, a vast armada of sleek, angular vessels, surged through the void of space, their weapons primed and ready. At the helm of the flagship, the Imperium's military commander, Admiral Zakran, gazed upon the holographic display with a grim expression. The human forces have fortified their positions, as we anticipated, he said, his deep, resonant voice carrying an edge of displeasure. They have pooled their resources and coordinated their defenses. This will make the conquest of their worlds more challenging. One of his subordinates, a young but brilliant tactician named Zira, stepped forward. Commander, our intelligence suggests that the human factions have set aside their differences and formed a unified military command. This will make it more difficult to exploit their divisions. Sakran's mandibles clicked in contemplation. Then we must find a way to sow discord among them once more. Divide and conquer has always been the Imperium's way. Prepare our forces for a direct assault on their primary manufacturing hubs. If we can cripple their industrial capacity, their unity will crumble, and they will be ripe for the taking. The Imperium's ships accelerated, their massive engines propelling them towards the human-controlled systems, a wave of destruction and conquest on the horizon. The skies above Arcturus Prime, the industrial heartland of the Human Alliance, were alive with the roar of engines and the crackle of weapons fire. Waves of Imperium fighters streaked across the atmosphere, raining down devastation upon the human defense grid. General Petrov, his face set in a grim expression, barked orders into his communication suite, his hands steady on the controls of the command hover tank he had personally piloted into the fray. All units, hold your positions. Concentrate your fire on the enemy capital ships. We can't let them breach our defenses. Around him, the ground forces of the United Human Alliance stood firm, their weapons blazing as they tried to stem the tide of the Imperium's onslaught. But the sheer scale of the alien armada was overwhelming, and despite their best efforts, the human lines began to falter. Suddenly, a brilliant flash of light erupted in the distance, 
and one of the Imperium's massive cruisers disintegrated in a spectacular display of destruction. Admiral O'Ailey's voice crackled over the comm channel, triumphant. The fleet has achieved orbit, General. We're hitting them with everything we've got. Hold the line. Help is on the way. Buoyed by the news, the human ground forces redoubled their efforts, their weapons tearing into the Imperium's advancing forces. But the alien invaders were relentless, their superior technology and tactics pushing the humans to the brink of collapse. As the battle for Arcturus Prime raged on, the leaders of the Human Alliance convened once more in the Council Chambers, their faces etched with worry. We're holding our ground, but barely General Petrov said, his voice terse. The Imperium's forces are overwhelming us. If we can't break their momentum soon, we may be forced to abandon Arcturus Prime. President Tanaka's brow furrowed in concentration. There must be something we're missing. The Imperium has always been meticulous in its planning. There has to be a weakness we can exploit. Admiral O'Reilly cleared his throat, his expression grim. We've been analyzing the Imperium's tactics, and there is one pattern that stands out. They seem to be concentrating their forces on our primary manufacturing and resource hubs, as if they're trying to cripple our industrial capacity. The other faction leaders nodded in agreement, their eyes widening as the implications dawned on them. Of course, General Petrov murmured, it's a classic divide and conquer strategy. They're trying to break our unity by striking at our most vital systems. President Tanaka's face lit up with a sudden realization. Then we need to draw them into a trap. Feign a retreat from Arcturus Prime, lure them in, and then hit them with everything we've got. The council members exchanged determined looks, their resolve hardening. They would not be cowed by the Imperium's might. Humanity would stand united, or it would fall divided. The battle for Arcturus Prime raged on, with the human forces slowly being pushed back by the relentless Imperium assault. But as the Imperium's forces advanced, they began to notice something strange the human defenders were withdrawing, falling back in an organized, orderly fashion. Admiral Zakron, his mandibles clicking with satisfaction, observed the retreating human forces through the viewscreen of his flagship. It seems our strategy has worked. The humans are crumbling under the weight of our assault. Prepare the fleet to pursue and destroy their remaining forces. Zira, the young Imperium tactician, stepped forward, his expression unreadable. Commander, I would advise caution. This retreat seems too orderly, too calculated. It may be a trap. Zakran waved a dismissive claw. Nonsense, Zira. The humans are beaten. They have no choice but to flee. Order the fleet to pursue and finish them off. With that, the Imperium's ships surged forward, their weapons blazing as they chased the retreating human forces. But as they approached the edge of the Arcturus system, a series of massive energy signatures flared to life, and the human fleet emerged from hiding, their weapons primed and ready. On my mark. Now. General Petrov's voice rang out, and the human forces unleashed a devastating barrage of missiles, plasma beams, and particle cannons ripping into the Imperium's unsuspecting ships. The Imperium's ships were caught in a vicious crossfire, their shields struggling to hold against the onslaught. Sacron, his mandibles clicking in fury, barked orders to his officers, desperately trying to coordinate a counterattack. What is the meaning of this, he roared. Where did these additional human forces come from? Zira, his eyes narrowed in concentration, studied the tactical display, his mind racing. Commander, our intelligence suggests that the human factions have been working together to lure us into a trap. They've been feigning a retreat to draw us in, and now they have us surrounded. Sacron's claws clenched in rage. Impossible. The humans are divided, weak. They could not have coordinated such a complex maneuver. Suddenly, a new energy signature appeared on the display, and Zira's eyes widened in alarm. Commander, we're detecting a transmission being broadcast from within our own fleet. It's coming from one of our own ships. Sacron's gaze snapped to the offending vessel, and his mandibles parted in a feral snarl. Traitor, they have infiltrated us. Order the fleet to target that ship immediately. But even as the Imperium's ships turned their weapons towards their own, the human forces pressed their advantage, raining down destruction upon the Imperium's beleaguered fleet. The battle raged on, with the human alliance's forces attacking relentlessly, their coordinated strikes overwhelming the Imperium's defenses. Sacron, his rage barely contained, watched helplessly as his ships began to crumble under the onslaught. How could this be, he snarled, his claws digging into the armrests of his command chair. 
The humans were supposed to be weak, divided. They should not have been able to mount such a formidable defense. Zera, his eyes fixed on the tactical display, spoke up, his voice calm and measured. Commander, it's clear now that the human factions have set aside their differences and united against us. Their coordination and tactics suggest a level of planning and strategy that we did not anticipate. Sakran's mandibles clicked in frustration. Then we must find a way to break their unity. Dispatch a squadron of fighters to that traitorous ship and destroy it. Without their inside information, the humans will be lost. But as the Imperium's fighters surged towards the target vessel, a massive explosion rocked the flagship and Zakron was thrown against the bulkhead, his vision blurring. When he finally regained his senses, he saw that the traitorous ship had been destroyed, its reactor core breached, and all around him, the Imperium's fleet was in disarray, its ships crippled and adrift. Zira's voice, tinged with a hint of triumph, reached his ears. Commander, the human forces have delivered a decisive blow. Our fleet is in tatters, and we are rapidly losing ground. I believe it is time to consider a strategic withdrawal. Sakron's mandibles clicked in frustration, but he knew that Zira was right. The humans had outmaneuvered them, and continuing the battle would only lead to the utter destruction of the Imperium's forces. With a grudging nod, he ordered the remaining ships to disengage and retreat, a bitter taste of defeat lingering in his mouth. The human forces watched in grim satisfaction as the Imperium's ships beat a hasty retreat, their once formidable fleet now in disarray. General Petrov, his shoulders straight and his expression set in a determined cast, turned to his fellow faction leaders. Well, gentlemen, it seems our gamble has paid off. We've managed to not only repel the Imperium's assault, but also deal them a devastating blow. Now, we must pursue them and ensure that they do not regroup and return. The other leaders nodded in agreement, their faces etched with a mixture of relief and resolve. General Petrov is right, President Tanaka said, her voice calm and steady. We cannot afford to let our guard down. The Imperium will surely retaliate, and we must be ready to meet them head on. As the faction leaders began to discuss plans for a coordinated counteroffensive, a young officer approached General Petrov, his expression grave. Sir, we've identified the traitor ship. It was the Imperium's primary intelligence vessel, secretly transmitting valuable data to the enemy. Our forces were able to destroy it, but not before we discovered the true nature of the betrayal. General Petrov's jaw tightened, his eyes narrowing. I see. Then we must take steps to ensure that this kind of treachery does not happen again. We cannot afford to have our unity shaken by those who would seek to undermine us. The other faction leaders, having overheard the exchange, nodded in solemn agreement. They had come too far, sacrificed too much, to let their hard-won victory be tarnished by the actions of a traitor. As the meeting adjourned, the air was thick with a renewed sense of purpose. Humanity had faced its darkest hour, but through unity and determination, it had emerged victorious. The Imperium had been taught a harsh lesson that when pushed to the brink, the human race would stand as one, and no force in the galaxy could break their resolve. 